Oof. That smells like. DJ J. Buck. Oh yeah, what's up guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Today guys, we are ending our series on cable management, cable connection, and now cable cleanliness. Today's topic is cleaning these things. This is probably one of the most aggravating parts, but you got to. This helps prolong the cable and everything as well. So answer me this, how many of you guys have done a party whether it be wedding, birthday party, college party. I know for college parties, these are really rough. But when you get finished, your cords are either soaked or sticky or somebody spilled something around your equipment or it's just nasty. It's just absolutely nasty. And we have to take it with our hands and wrap it with our hands, just like I showed you on part one of the series, and wrap that with our hands, and now it's on our hands. We don't use sanitizer, we don't use anything until we get home. That means anything that we do and touch from that point on has the same dirt and grime that came with the cables and stuff on it. Terrible, terrible. So today we're gonna to teach you how to clean these suckers. This is something that you probably wanna take like a Sunday or the day after your event or whatever day that you have free and just take some time and clean these things. Now, one of the things I, I would highly recommend is that you, if any cable is dirty and sticky and stuff, you definitely wanna inspect the cable and everything first before you begin the process of cleaning. You don't want any type of liquid or anything like that getting on the inside of your cables and damaging it, or if it's a power cable, you don't want it inside of there because when you plug it up, you're gonna create some electricity. Also, it doesn't just have to be something that's spilled on your cables. I know for all of those who use wire management, uh, that when you use your gaffer tape to actually do some wire management on the floors at your events, that that tape gets sticky and everything on there too. So, there's a couple of solutions and everything that you can use to this, but let's talk about what not to use first. Here's the first thing that I would not recommend using. Paper towels. Paper towels only because paper towels are pretty flimsy, so when you get tape and gunk and all kind of crap all over your stuff. Paper towels is not going to help you really get anything off of the wiring. It's pretty much just going to rip and you're going to end up using a whole roll to try to get this done. So I wouldn't recommend using paper towels. What I would say is get you an old wash rag or just a rag or something that's dirty or just one you just don't care about anymore. Get yourself a container with some warm water and some soap. I mean, pretty much take it and scrub it. So what you do is, you got your cord and everything here, you just take it and you just scrub it all the way down, cleaning all the parts of the cable, making sure it's all nice, shiny, and not sticky anymore. And you go all the way down the cable like this. Like, I don't necessarily have to do this cable the whole way, but you guys kind of get the gist. And this water and stuff on here is going to be nasty. The washcloth or the wash rag you use is going to be nasty. Your hands are going to be nasty. So prepare for all of that. But you're going to want to do all this because this helps prolong the longevity of your cables and stuff too. If you've got all kind of craziness and stuff on here, if you cut it by accident, if it starts to wear and tear on you eventually, all this stuff is stuff that can get in and be detrimental to your equipment. So you definitely want to take care of it in that essence as well. A lot of the cables that really get messy and stuff for me are usually power cables because those are usually run over grass, over dance floors, or beside you, and things like that. And XLRs. XLRs are usually run the same distance because wherever you're putting your speaker and stuff at, usually there's a power cord to follow. So these are usually the two cords that I have the most problems with, and mainly at those college gigs like this one. All right, so you guys wanna see exactly why I don't bring all my good stuff? This is a good example right here, check this out. This shiny coating that's on the floor is all beer. It's all beer. Even over here next to my equipment, that's all beer. This is why I don't bring 
the good stuff. So. Like that was a total freaking nightmare. I mean, there was beer and stuff everywhere. People threw beer, people do the craziest stuff at some of these events. Let me know what some of the craziest stuff that you've seen at an event that really kind of got to your equipment, whether it be on your facade, somebody put a cup down on your table, somebody put it on your facade, somebody put it, just spilled it, man. It's, I've had all, everything that you guys can probably say, I probably had it done to me, so it's, it's absolutely insane how often that happens with us. Now, after you've done all that and you've cleaned everything, you have two options. You can actually let them let the cord air dry or you can actually get yourself a towel and kind of pull the wire slowly through. And that pretty much just dries off the cord. All right, guys. Well, hey, this video wasn't that long because it's really simple. It's really easy to be able to put these three together and use these as your practices and stuff at your gigs. This needs to be second nature to a lot of guys. I can't tell you how many DJs I've seen that don't use these three methods and their chords are horrendous. I cannot use some of these guys' chords and stuff if they bring them with them or if they let me borrow something. It's terrible. I mean, the cleanliness is ridiculous. It is horrible. The bundles of wires, terrible. I also like to make sure I thank Hosa one last time. Appreciate all the cords and cables and everything you guys provided me with so that I can show my audience and let them know exactly what I'm going to be using at the upcoming events. I hope you guys have enjoyed the series and you've gained some knowledge from some of these videos because I'm putting these out there just so they can educate you as well. I know I've got some vets out there that this is like nothing to them. They probably use these tactics and got some vets out there. I've seen some veteran DJs who do not use this technique and are constantly on Amazon and wherever to buy cables. If you guys are one of those DJs and you're looking at this video, I've got links below for all cables. You can, you can just go use them, get the cables from me. Just go get them. <laughs> all right, well, we're gonna conclude the series and get back to some more fun. I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you like the video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. As well as if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you do so because we've got a lot more stuff like this coming this year. We've already done collaborations this year. We've already done three-part series this year. Man, I got some stuff coming, man. You don't want to miss it. It's coming, I promise. And to get that reminder when I put out my next video, make sure you hit that notification bell so that you can be notified when I put out the next piece of content. All right, guys, I am going to get out of here. I have got way more work to do, stuff to show you. I've got a series that I may be talking about here coming up soon, but we're going to get out of here today. So if you don't know, now you know, guys. Peace.